All right, getting the last few go live things ready. Right. Okay. Um, play writing. Let's get all this. So Facebook Live, because it's obnoxious, makes you do everything all at once, and it will not let you close out. Let's see if this will. Okay, Gucci. Okay, Facebook Live is being garbage. What a surprise. <laughs> okay, let's see if that works. Anyways, I don't care if Facebook Live works or not. I'm not going to worry about it any longer. Ah, oh, beautiful. We have a nice fire. Yay. Um, so here we are with Fox. Um... I'm going to go ahead and read through these. I'm going to type that we are starting the stream, so any of those brave script shatter souls who want to join us can. Um, there are, actually. Um, and I'm doing a live edit on Twitch for these screenplays here. There we go. We are all ready. Oop. That actually works. Hey, it's Thanks. me. Hooray. All right, cool. So let's get down to business here. Good. Yeah, they have the first page ah, attached. Okay. I was like, oh, exactly. <laughs> hey, you, have, you haven't been around in a I while, know. please. Goodness gracious. All right, so this is Chris, the Christmas or Thanksgiving or something edition. So he's going to break down an entire screenplay, 10 pages at a time. That's pretty cool. All right, Blackbirds. Inspired by two events, Australia, 1870. When a young indigenous male is taken into slavery as a pearl diver, he must learn what it means to be a leader if he is going to escape from captivity. So looking at the first page, establishing, but naming an establishing shot, that kind of feels weird. That worries me. <laughs> um, sick day in an out of work, an out of work ex shoulder interviews for a private sector job, but he fired the security chief. <laughs> Nightingale, child, the child father. Who would watch <laughs> Wait, stream at three a.m.? Me. Oh boy, it's three a.m. <laughs> well, it's only midnight. Well, it's eleven forty-nine. It's only eleven forty-nine here. here, so it has to be at least. It feels two, like three a.m. because I sleep. It a has lot. to be two fifty over there. I, my time father. for bed alarm just went off, but I'm still here. Yeah, we're still toughing it out. It's a Friday night, guys. Here. We'll we got go, frozen gonna, yogurt today. Yeah, we're we're sleepy, so we might go pretty quickly here. An out of work ex soldier interviews her pirate nightingale. Interviews for a private sector job at the fire security chief she's hoping to replace just on the billing to exact revenge, and now it's up for her to save the hostages. Basically, her old boss was... Those bananas. I have schnapps and chicken nuggets. Ooh, you are well prepared. It's in 3 a.m. Light right there. So long since I've seen a boss stream. I know, Nightingale. Well, you're on the right one. The edits are always the best. This is the OG. I forget back. the feeling of it. Ah, <laughs> power. Usually it involves funny voices. Not especially with these Me ones. Me falling asleep halfway through. Yeah, she will be it's sleeping like a, right ooh. here in <laughs> just a few moments. A small town disc jockey recalls the night a group of crazed animals, activists, and rights activists botched a ransom deal after realizing their leader may have been involved with the poacher that they were holding captive. That's a mouthful. The boost in productivity it brings. Yes, indeed. So. Look at that first page, yo. Ooh. What does this first page dialogue. say to you? Dialogue. Yep, that's a really rough dialogue thing. 
in the beginning, Rebel Rouser, especially for an unnamed character. I'm going to say, you know, I'm probably not going to do that one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nix that one. Uh, a pretentious magician, ooh, I like that, skips out of town after failing miserably on a TV talent show. He returns two years later to discover his best friend has replaced him with a ventriloquist dummy. And the only way to get a second chance on the show is to accompany his friend and dummy on a cabaret tour. Kind of funny. And our final surprise. It's correct. That a secret U.S. Army base faced threats from aliens, demonic forces, and a general who detonated an on-site nuke cover for a project that's spiraling out of control. <laughs> They're one of five clone aliens. God. Sounds pretty cool. cool. It's alien meets aliens. <laughs> mm-hmm. This glass, then go to bed. Fair enough, fair yeah, enough Finish Chad the Father. nuggets, too, okay? Yeah, finish that nugget and whiskey. Cold nuggets just ain't the same. All right, so any preferences? Uh, I like the Roger and the last one. Okay. I also sp I spied. Only down to that half the time. Nice votes so far. Wow. It's only three, but... um. Out of work ex-soldier interviews for a private sector job. Yeah, I didn't know. Roger. Mission and Cabaret Tour. And then the Alien one. I don't say ye. I... The one that I'm thinking about is this one, if it's going to be good. I'm not sure. There isn't so much as a cloud in the sky in this pristine summer day. This weltering Australian heat. Mmm. It's very, very heavily written. Mmm. It's risky. Mm. Looks a little overwritten for a screenplay. I said peddling English. Okay, yeah, I think I agree with Fox. The last two, she's right. Damn it, she's right. What? Yes, she is. All right, let's download all this stuff. Get this party started. Oh, yes, it's coming quickly, isn't it? Fox is sleeping. It's... No, my neck. Oh. Poor soul. Um. I like that picture. Pretty. <laughs> yeah. I... Fox says you guys should see. Fox is doing over there. Did you do you have the 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 picture of yeah. the um? I did. You. All right, this is going to take a hot minute here because life uh, is against me. Older. At. Okay, and then notepad. Hold on to your horses, ladies and gents. We are about to transition to... Oh, I see. Somebody is... I'm trying to do work for class. The program I have to do for the assignment locks you out after five minutes if you aren't a member. Yeah. It's weird. Hang on. Let's see. Yeah. BF notepad. Edit. Boom. Look at that. All those presets. Let me just uh, let me just on the other side so you don't have to twist your neck that particular way. Yeah, maybe be able to sit like this. Yeah, work. Look, maybe not. That's like. <laughs> This is very important, people. This is very important. All right. Comfortlicious. Comfortlightful. Okay. Um, the commune. Okay. Doing some intense sleepy breathing right there. <laughs> Those are yawns. Oh. <laughs> Those are yawns. <laughs> <laughs> I take sleep very seriously. 
Yeah, I'm like, I guess she's tired. I'm gonna, I've had to wake up early to drive to Vallejo two days in a row. Ugh. I need to sleep for 12 hours. Yeah. All right, exterior hilltop, North Dakota, Canadian border, up on an eagle, locked on prey. It's aerial circle. You can pass me that cup of water. It's aerial circle constricts. Below to see we're in a campsite. Oh, just... So it's like up an eagle and it like pans down. A oh. little bit. I'm not I'm not a big fan of I know it's kind of a style thing now. I'm not a big fan of camera directions, to be honest. Um, but maybe that's just me. Um avoid camera directions. Um personal preference at least. Legs folded, eyes closed. Yeah, so 50 is something you're all Native American Indian. Legs folded, eyes closed. Holds a smoldering camelé pipe in his hands. We weren't doing this one, were we? The commune? That's the last one. That was one you wanted to do. Oh, I thought it was called something else. Oh, that is. Okay, okay. I thought it was called something else. Whew. I was scared. <laughs> Over at the Indian. Okay, Indian's tent. Inside the unzipped flap of a Coleman sleeping bag lays a Colt 45. Morocco like rattle fears the earth. Top the rocks are coiled up. A rattlesnake suns itself. Contented, the snake's tongue darts out of the air. The one thing I would say is that is the most common image I see of the desert is like the rattlesnake on a rock shaking its, its tail. Rattlesnake. That's rock. Feels like a very common image. Could we potentially get something? He's from the desert, so he knows. Bit fresher. Yeah, I mean, mostly it's just wind. <laughs> I'll give you the secret of the desert. It's ninety percent wind, windiness, <laughs> and wind and sand. Yeah. Um, a small scorpion freezes in position. Wait until the. Gravel churns. Okay, hilltop Indian. Eyes open. Turns look down at the southern wasteland. Uneven ground. Small shrubs. Camp landscape. Two approaching jeeps. Ooh, exclamation points. Uh, I would say avoid exclamation points because it's. It seems like a. It seems like it's a little bit manipulative. I would say to the reader where, you know, if we. It should be described in such a way that we're putting those exclamation points in on our own. Um, even in prose, even in writing and novels, you almost invariably avoid exclamation points outside of dialogue or, you know, like once in your entire, like, 400,000-word novel type thing. That's, like, your level of how often you should use exclamation points. Yeah. Um, Forced excitement. Two jeeps, beers in hand. It's a party hearty for a group of college-aged youths. Three males in the lead jeep, while the back jeep sports a boyfriend and girlfriend in the front seats in a strange Gregorian monk-like robe figure in the black <laughs> Well, at least that's... I was about to say that the college kids are something I've also seen before getting into some sort of trouble, but the Gregorian monk thing is keeping me interested. Hilltop the Indian rises to his feet, turns east, looks down to a crest of a veil surrounded by low lying hills to see a new sort complex. At its center, a flagpole and American flag ripples in the breeze, idle volleyball next to that. Broadcasting antenna, cafeteria. How are we getting all this information on camera? Because. Is it going to, like, it's, like, so detailed. I wonder if we need all these details about the complex, because, like... This might be a brief shot, right? Yeah. I don't see us getting this, all this information on camera. Yeah, at least... Personally, I'm like, uh, I don't know how that would play on film. Could work. Oh, yeah, and while you're here, Nightingale, <laughs> I'm uh, testing out some new log lines. Tell me which ones you, which ones you like. 
Um, make sure that the curious to see if the Facebook Live is even working. I said that you were live, but I didn't test it out. One person reached. Probably you. Certainly not. Yeah. Oh, I didn't look at it though. Yes. Woohoo, so it did work. As in which seems the most interesting? Yes, yes. I'm testing out some new log lines about what my next thing is going to be. I have a feeling it's going to be this one story that I've already outlined since it's already the one in the lead. But we'll see what happens. Military offices and spacious cafeteria are linked together by sea through Pexagas corridors, two desert camouflage painted vehicles, a Humvee, and a tarped FM, FT, FMTV. Mm -hmm. She thinks I'm dyslexic, and she's not wrong. Above our <laughs> top galvanizing fencing lines, inner slopes of the veil. Helicopter pad, yeah, so that's a lot of details. So yeah. we just need, like, maybe whatever is necessary for the next few pages. Okay, motor, southern wasteland. Camera finds upraised pile of dirt. Minneapolis. I'm talking auto tracking off. Oh, I'm taking auto tracking off. I think he's on that. I'm taking auto tracking off. And I'm tasking private first class Logan Bennett to work on his malfunction. Exterior hotel, Minneapolis, continuous. 20 or so floors filled with guest suite windows. A place of luxury. Those with money. Based on the traffic, business is good. Two security guards stand dutifully at the entrance. Both wear business suits. Becky booms. Very taking a long time to get to this reply. Um, so just remember, we don't necessarily need all this information. Like, I don't think you need this. Like, because we just said Minneapolis up here. We don't need this segue into this scene. We should just be in a guest suite. Okay, that seems like a new scene. Like, I don't think they're answering. Like somebody in a scene, I thought. Beautifully at the entrance, both. This is a guest suite? In Minneapolis, right? But before, like, the thing above it? Where was that? Basically. Motorized camera finds an upright pile of dirt. Too much resistance to overcome. Next to it is a fat prairie dog. Then the ticket says... Yeah, this is a malfunction. Behind him stands another gray hair. This man fidgets back and forth. Stirs his rum and coke. Last line badge pinned to the lapel of his dinner jacket reads, Ernest Giles, Deputy Governor of North Dakota. Politicians suit be damned. Ernest Giles looks to keep you more comfortable than duck blind nursing. Blue and coffee. Third man wears a lab technician's white smock and round spectacles. His glasses, his glass line badge reads Todd Zook, R&D lead technician, Hoffman Associates, blah, 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 blah. Tom and Jerry cartoon draws Todd Zook, mid 30s, over to Pitties and occupied double bed. Going to be Todd. What? Brief the Deputy General the best I could with what I'm authorized to say. The security of the commune is your responsibility, General, not mine. At this point, I'm here more as a resource for Dr. Lafsellas than anything else. Seeing through, seeing as though the U.S. government, it, well, I can't read, seeing as though the U.S. States, United States military has been a key funder of your research facility for the past ten years, one would think, one would be bending over backwards, one would think one would be bending over backwards to offer assistance. Yes, and should such assistance be needed, I can be found right here. Hodzuk pats his mattress that he's sitting on. General Covington grunts with contempt, turns to a laptop screen, features a four-way split live-action camera feed. More views. Top right, rooftop point of view. Top left, a prim military woman. Bottom right, ground level view of the desert. Bottom left, a military Do we need all that information about all the different camera feeds? I feel like we're getting so much information, it's hard to know what's important, which is a really huge problem, especially early in a screenplay, because your reader is looking for one thing, which is an anchor. Something that they can say, okay, I kind of know what's going on, now tell me a story. They need to get to that, I kind of know what's going on phase. Yeah. When you spend about two hours spending, explaining your world to your new D&D crew and realize you forget to switch to normal speech from Pittsburghese. So I spent about two hours explaining my world like a lunch head. 
without making sure anyone could understand me. <laughs> what a <laughs> jag off. <laughs> That's good. That's amazing. What a jag off. Uh, but I will say for this screenplay, um, trim down all the details to the essential. What only give me enough to understand to understand stand the action showing me what's on the camera feed seems excessive distracting yeah and your reader just needs that ink like it, he needs to just be like okay or she hey what is what's this like you know okay we're in a military base cool now what happens? Like, that's all we need. We don't need all these details. Or we need just maybe one detail to, like, anchor us. And hopefully that's something that actually gets used. Um, eyes on a desk. Waterless. We can see through its glass to a flat screen monitor on the other side. This monitor features a six-way split screen. <laughs> Read life action feeds. There's a general coming to... Oh, my gosh. Pencil eraser and tip drops into view. Yeah, I agree with that. Writing note. A pencil as a razor drops into view. Follow it down the bottom of the tank where it pins one of the legs of a black widow spider. <laughs> Top of a sandy floor. Tough guy soldier clears his throat. Victoria, don't you think firing up a helicopter is a little overkill to scare away a couple of kids? Me and my man could do just as well with the Humvee. Pencil tip releases off the black widow skyler. The now crippled arachnid hollows away. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful it. rendition, thank you. Or as we all know, the plot of Hamlet. <laughs> it's true. Let's see how this pretty military woman takes a pencil off his chain. He could go over in the 40s. Bangs, just back in a tight Bangs? A tight bun? Maybe it's like... That? How would you be able to tell? Maybe she doesn't have any bangs. But, Maybe like that. But that makes it sound like just her bangs. Or the... Yeah, it's just the bang bun. Just bangs, like, yeah. It's just... The bang bun. <laughs> like these. That's a beautiful bang bun. Maybe it's that's the what hair's she down. means. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird. Maybe that's what she means. Maybe. Thin European physique, cakey green lipstick. Lipstick. Hmm. Behind Victoria stands tough, older guy, late twenties, early forties, very special feature, even from a glacier. Ooh. Name of his uniform reads O Bjornson. Yeah. Born Bjornson, everyone on the basic called the brick. I muted. Carpa, don't you ever call me by my first name again. Especially not in the presence of General Covington. I don't give an F how long you've been here. I am your base commander. And you will treat me with the respect that I deserve, or you will be relieved of duty. Am I making myself clear? Big stands up, holds a salute. Yes, Space Commander Gov Glover. <laughs> okay, soldier. Is this the same? That's I guess this is the same yeah. guy. I would just name him the Brick up here. Um, the name, holding out the name, is only really because remember, a screenplay is still a technical document, so holding out the name like a half page when there's not really a reveal around it. Not really that uh, useful. Um, just name the brick with his opening. <laughs> so, well, I'm also doing a whiny voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do think the dialogue needs a little bit of elbow grease. It's also a yeah. super long line, right? So, like, this is... Yeah, like this... Corporal, don't ever call me by my first name again, especially not in the presence of General Cummington. Yeah, I don't give enough how long you've been here. I'm your base commander, and you'll treat me with respect, and that that I deserve, or you'll be related to duty. Am I making myself clear? Um, you know, that's a really long way of saying, address me by my title, or, like, go outside. You know, yeah. whatever that is, you know. Uh, shorten, 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 shorten everything you can in a screenplay. And every, everything in a novel. I gotta do this to my novel. Just cut every line down, cut everything down, make it smaller, make it smaller, make it smaller. Uh, because then only the good stuff is left behind. 
Uh, short and long, long over explaining. Uh, can be a lot sharper. Yeah, very true, very true, Chad Father. Especially, especially in dialogue because no one uh, talks in in. It's especially in all these very in all these complete sentences. No one talks in a lot of complete sentences back to back. Especially when they're like kind of these short, like punchy ones. She should just be like, is that my title? And you'll see, no, Base Commander Glover. Do you want to continue your duty? Yes, Base Commander Glover. That you will refer to me as my title. Yes, Base Commander Glover. Like, easy. You know. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so, yeah, but those are, those are big opportunities. Because that will really slow down a read if you're not. Especially if there's multiple. Like, one you can maybe get away with. Two or three... Uh, within like 10 pages, you're going to really start uh, slowing down a reader. Another man who stands behind Victoria rests his hand on the brick's shoulder, some hot glasses. Dr. Lefselas. You. Base Commander Glover, I think Corporate Bjorkson makes an excellent point. <laughs> Evil German! Yay! Yay. It is now time for debate, Doctor. You may cordially F off as well. I'm in the middle of an operation here. Oh, and Tina says, salute the brick inches closer to Victoria. She relents with a sigh. Air those kids off, like you said, Corporal, and make sure one of your apes captures some video footage of our little visitors. Brick finishes his salute, then exits the room. Packs away at her keyboard. So the kids are just coming in randomly. Sedan knife to the air. Family of three, a 13 year old daughter. Going to be the wife. A lot of characters right now. Yeah, I haven't seen anything with the yeah original like kids and the monk. I have no idea. What's well, I think that's that. who they're trying to scare away. Yeah, but why? I still don't. But know like, why? Why, they why, why don't they just be and... like, "Hey, you guys can't be here." Keyboard. <laughs> Loud. That's a piano. No, no, she's answering the riddle. Oh, oh. Um, we have a lot of characters. Here and if yes, you freshly f off, excellent. <laughs> that's true. It's good to see some good lines. I mean, but, but like that's, but like this is no time for debate, Doctor. I you can course f off as well. I'm in the middle of an operation here. You could cut you this. F off. You may cordially F off as I'm well, busy. doctor. Boom, right back to work. Yeah. Like so these extra line like the 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 other two sentences take what could be this really sharp line around just doctor, you can cordially F off. Boom, back to the brick. Like that's the moment you want. That will really characterize Victoria in a much better way than adding this extra padding. Um, you know. Those types of things. And, like, if you want him to be a doctor and you want someone to see it, just have him wearing a lab coat, you know, white smock, glasses. So you already have that. We know he's kind of a doctor type. Um, yeah, anyways. You have a lot of characters here. If you have something I couldn't tell you, which is a huge problem, who is the protagonist? And what do all these people want? Yeah, you got to get to the wants really early. If by page seven, there's not a character who has a positive one, it's a little tricky. The only thing I've seen so far is kind of emerging scare here is to scare the kids away. Run, that's like a pretty, you know, and that can work. But, um, you know, you want to get, you want to get things moving pretty quick. Um, so white. Yeah. Down, honey. If we don't mm -hmm. reach this place alive, what's the point? Mm-hmm. But looks you just watch the stand slows. I'm sorry, girls. I didn't mean to scare you. The daughter looks at her father. Daddy, what kind of place are you taking us to that would ask questions like this? Ask questions? The clipboard which has a questionnaire attached to it. Well attempts to reach around while driving. Give me that. Honey, watch out. Brakes locked the sand pulls. Shh. Road. Spraying dust. Index finger. A ring in the father transferred to his family. 
Now, listen to me. I was lucky to find out this opportunity. $5,000 for a couple of hours of our day is a bargain. Literally, manna from heaven. Shut up, Lonnie. <laughs> Just shut your mouth. <laughs> I've lost my job, and world knows. So this yeah, is a little on the nose. That is the problem. You can never, ever get this information across this way in dialogue without it sounding really hard. Um, and that's the thing. These are unimportant characters, I believe, so far, because they're unnamed, right? They're just father, mother, daughter. So why are we learning their backstory in the first place? And then why is it coming through? Uh, or like dialogue is a really bad place to bring it in. So first ask, is this backstory necessary? I would, I'm going to guess it. It's probably no, probably not. Uh, and if it is, then you definitely want to start looking for other ways to express it, especially then through dialogue, or at least hide it more through dialogue. It is extremely... On the nose, yeah. Uh, the school of thought was to add a bunch and cut it down, Child Father. You're probably right, but before, you know, because this is submitted to the amateur offerings, right? So before you submit this to something, uh, to anything, you want to tr do a lot of that trimming if you can on your own, uh, or else, you know, a good reductive edit is, is, is powerful. This is 121 pages. That's really long for a screenplay. This could probably get to 90. That's scary, but you got to do it. Pull out that freaking butcher's knife and say, I'm going to not, I'm going to cut every last word, every last line, every last extra scene. I'm going to combine scenes. I'm going to combine characters. We have 10 named characters so far. Uh, so we Majin. need to trim, 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 trim. Majin, what's up? How's it going? What scripts did you choose to look at for the five? <laughs> We're at the commune. And, 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 Roger. The Commune and Roger. So yes. Uh, so in the nose, um, first make sure... Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. See, this is what you never want to happen to your readers. Mm -hmm. Get to get cut off her oxygen until she wakes back up. Oh, no. Oh, look. <laughs> uh, lost my job. in there. It's just was necessary, then ensure it's um, delivered well. Um, okay. We're on the verge of losing the house. Short of selling drugs, this is the best option we have is starve off the wolves another month. Uh huh. Stave off. Stave off the wolves another month. Danny, these people must have done something awfully bad that someone would hire a third party to check up on them. <laughs> well, the daughter's dialogue is definitely strange. Oh, no. oh, I guess she's 13, but still, like... It's pretty advanced. But, like, that, those two registers of language, like, someone would hire a third party to check up on them, and, but daddy. Yeah. Like, that seems, uh, is, is pretty strange due to having a few registers of language at once. Um, so I think I'm going to say, I'm going to start putting my overall notes together, uh, which will be improve. I'm going to say dialogue is going to be one. Trim and clean dialogue. Yeah. Rick, when the writer look off, check off gun. It's true. We're true. Yeah, check out, yeah. Page eight. I'll say TCF for the child father. Um, check out Chekhov's guns. Be sure every payoff, every setup pays off. Um, that's, you know, hugely important. Don't set a bunch of stuff up that's not going to happen. Okay, look, Gracie. Okay. Look, Gracie, I know you're not stupid. These people are probably just sex offenders the military is trying to rehabilitate. Oh, no, that's reassuring. When has the U.S. Army gotten, gotten into the business of rehabilitating sex offenders? I don't know, Lonnie. Throws his hands up. Maybe what happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas as pertains to combat troops when they get back to the good old U.S. of A. Well, you just quit badgering me already. Let's just do our job, collect our money, and put this bizarre incident behind us. $5,000 richer. Does that sound okay to you? 
<laughs> Alright, so driving around, I think I'm going to kind of call it here in terms of this particular screenplay. Mm-hmm. Like Grumpy Father, uh, Grandfatherly Voice, you sure you're ready for this, sweetheart? Another new character, Eve, another new character. Evan. Indian jock oh, driver. Okay, so these are the jocks person. that are coming in. Yeah, uh, I think you just have too much stuff. I would say. Yeah. Um, over description and action is slowing down the read a lot. Reduce to the bare essentials. Uh, I'd say the good. Um, I like the. Let's get this up actually. Um, I really like the kind of tone, the flow. Tone and the mystery of the hooded guy with college kids. I, we, we agree, Majin. Yes, I would agree. Uh, that's actually a good one. Uh, couldn't, couldn't identify single protagonist. Uh, the concept is good. That's another good note. Like, great concept and setup. But uh, just need to get there faster. There was enough of a mystery box to hold my attention, yeah. Not like the other. I'd love to see the rewrite of this. Yeah, I agree, Chad Father. I'd love to see the one that if the writer is able to through just true self excruciation through self flagellation, if the writer is able to trim this down to ninety pages, I think he can do it or she can do it. I don't remember uh, the gender of the writer, um, but they can do it, and um, I'm I'm pretty, um, yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm certain it will just sing because it's a great concept. Uh, okay, anyways, uh, we are tired, and we are going to go to the next screenplay before Fox completely perishes. Mm-hmm. You are unfollowable. So Neon Gaming, welcome. Fox is uh, Fox is not uh, nearing rip status. Oh my gosh, really? Let's get you some water. Let's get you some water. You can do this, baby. Mm-hmm. Roger screenplay. Here we go. I'm going to get you another glass of water. Mm-hmm. I'm going to let you start reading this aloud while okay. I get the water for you. Okay, I and guess. listen. Him, him, him. Even McAllister. Oh, that's like from Home Alone. Even McAllister. Okay. Him, him. Producer, voiceover. Steven McAllister, you're on in five. Follow me. Interior backstage dressing room evening. A man sits in front of a dressing table, staring nervously at himself in the mirror. This is Steven, mid-twenties, clean cut, slick back hair, black tux with a multicolored bow tie. Kids magic set magician. Be right out. That's what I said. McAllister's the name from Home Alone. From Home Alone? Yeah. Producer nods, closes the dressing room door. Steven has an old Polaroid picture. It's him as a five year old standing next to a magician. Signed, all the best, Thor. X. The look on Steven's face in the picture suggests it was the best day of his life. Oh, you're still hungry? No, no, I'm good. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's like smelling salt, peanut butter. No. Yes. Awaken. Awaken. <laughs> okay. Even a little bit of a little look on your face. It looks like it's something else. I'm reading. <laughs> yeah. Fox, uh, when, when Fox gets sleepy, the sass, sass, sass increases. No sass. Just I'm just being silly. You're awesome. We're on a can't remember why you should read. This is a script where the main character is played by Sam from Game of Thrones in a short. In a short. Oh. I don't know. Sean Astin? Yeah, the commune. <laughs> Alright. Kevin!
Okay, start to nervously. This is Steven, mid 20s, clean cut. We'll be right out. Closing room door. Steven holds an old ploy picture in his hand. It's a five year old. Saying next to a musician is signed. All the best. Look on Steven's face, and the picture appears. Just it was the best day of his life. Steven looks back at himself in the mirror. Corridor. Steven follows the producer down a long corridor, passing the other contestants. Dressing rooms, try to stay focused. Okay, Steven, you are first up. Or we'll do his entrance, do his bow, embrace the audience, yada yada yada, then he will introduce you. I'm first? Is that a problem? No, it's just... I've noticed that, usually. <laughs> the last act that manages to fool him. I guess he must be more lenient by that? Ho ho. Ho ho ho. Oh, it's a female producer? <laughs> Wait. So Steven equals Sam from Game of Thrones. Okay. Mm. I don't even know what's happening. So what we're doing Neon Gaming is we're reading a screenplay posted up on Script Shadow. And we're editing it for the writers. So this is a edit. It's a very sleepy one tonight because we mm. started late. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Else editing. Yeah, that's true. We'll say um uh, did the producer get introduced? I don't believe so. Just she's ref she's referred to as a producer. Yeah, but there's no she There's no yeah, okay. Alright. Oh, you're being serious? If there's a chance I could be last, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> right. I don't think you understand. We edited it to make it seem like they were last. Steven looks confused. <laughs> you know, and the show on a bang. The power of television. <laughs> Poor Sam from Game of Thrones. He's real dumb. <laughs> For a second, I thought you were doing code. <laughs> yeah, so our edits are on the right side, and the screenplay is on the left here. Yeah. Good questions, though. I like the uh, I like the joke. Yeah. About him not realizing it's edited. Yeah. Especially worked with your voice. <laughs> the power of television. The power of television. <laughs> I don't think you want that. It's 3 a.m. and I'm drunk. <laughs> That's right. I'll be cashing that edit soon enough. I like it. I like it. Okay. Oh. Studio door. Sincerely turns my rules for eyes. Studio <laughs> door. Okay. Yeah. Steven stands nervously by the studio door, psyching himself up. He also talks to someone who. Okay. We were ready to go in five, four. <laughs> yeah, nice dry humor. The lights fade out. Darkness oozes and awes in the audience. Thunder and wars. Excitement in the air as a spotlight shines to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to be the answer? No, yeah, no, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the biggest magic show in the entire galaxy. Can you deceive a god? Is it? It's time for another ungodly magic. Please welcome to the stage the son of Odin, god of thunder, the one and only Thor. Thor appears, legs apart, arms crossed. This guy means business. He swings his golden hammer in the air. The crowd goes wild. Who wrote the script you're editing? Um, I believe it is a gentleman from Script Shadow named, or er, yeah, named mm -hmm. Brendan Cleves. Um, so this one I'm liking so far. Yeah. So, cause look, look, look at the great job we get. We we know who our main character is early. We see him looking at like this idol of his, Thor. We don't get too many details about the room he's standing in. And... So he's doing a lot of showing, which is nice. Mm -hmm. 
I like that I see that Thor has his idol as he's going to perform right after him. All right. Let me see. So the door swings open. Thor, late 50s, suave, flamboyant, confident, and mysterious. Everything Steven isn't. Steven can take his eyes. These types of moments... Mm, I know it's very common in screenwriting, but one of the joys, I would say, of reading... If this is serious, then it's amazing. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> um... One of the joys of reading is doing some of the math on your own. And the reader will love you if he can put these things together and you don't explain them too much to them as a writer. And I think this is just getting over the line of, you know, we we kind of have gotten Stephen's description of him kind of being overweight, looking like Sam from Game of Thrones. Uh, and then Thor being this, like, suave... I don't think we actually got a super deep... Just, did we get a description of Steven? He's in, um... Steven, mid-twenties, clean-cut, slacked hair. Kid. Kids, magic set, magician. Kids, magic set, magician. Yeah. So I would, you know, give some more. So, like, um... Say, um... Don't tell me. It's everything. Steven. Isn't just show us and we'll believe you. Let your pros do the work. Fox is mm. fading. Not hanging over the heads with us. An alternate could be underlining what sent that sentence with additional capital letters to this fun buoyancy. Yep. Novel is about the effect of time on characters. She's faded, fam. It's true. Faded. Faded. Mm -hmm. Faded. <laughs> we had a free lit Friday night. It's got a pinter yo. We went to get fro yo. <laughs> <laughs> we went to the gym together. We went to the gym, like late night gym. No, we were pretty. We was pretty. Got fro yo. Got some Indian food. Crazy. <gasps> We go hard, we go, guys. We go freaking we go hard. hard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a twelve thirty. She's poop. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I am, though. Oh, yeah. Thanks for this Twitch Prime Prime <laughs> sub margin. You've earned thyself a priority edit. Um, so the way priority edits work is it is very similar to a free edit, or it's actually identical to a free edit, but you get to cut. The line. So you get to Ooh. cut the line. I'm almost out of schnapps, so I'm almost done. Well, I'm glad you've been um, shopping it up. That's a real Should we get name. Fox and Booze? No. Yes. No, that'll just put me right to sleep. <laughs> right to sleep. Oh. Just cheese on the arm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Twitch has spoken. They, th um. they, think, you should, they think you should get sauced up. Like a recipe for disaster. It sounds like a recipe for sleepiness. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep cruising. I'm sure this. I feel like this story has momentum. It'll yeah. wake me up with its with its excitement. Yeah, it's Cut the line. Yes. There's a very long queue of people who want the free edits, obviously, because they're free and we do them live on Twitch. Um, so yes. Stephen can't take his eyes off the screen this time. His moment. His the door at the end of the corridor flings open. Roy's late twenties, baby face. Holding an old, he runs down the corridor, chased by two brother security guards. Steven! Roy? Just his eyes, Roy. Two security guards drop me tackle right to the ground. That's Roy. He's my friend. Guys. Security guards look out. The producer just in the release the intruder. They pick him up, dust him down. What are you doing here? I left my gig early. No, I mean, what are you doing? Here. <laughs> yes. You don't like my really derpy Steven voice? I just couldn't bear to think of you performing without it. Roy puts the suitcase down on the floor and flips the lid. Inside is an old-fashioned scary and twerkish dummy. This is Roger, <laughs> unknown age. Roy rummages through the case. Is that that one's yeah, that one's Roy rummages through the case and pulls out a small shopping bag from under the dummy. Without what? 
<laughs> he sounds so dumb. I know. He gives it to Steven. Steven looks inside the bag. Fresh freshener? You mentioned yesterday you would run out. Steven looks at the gift for Plex. Oh no. I got the wrong one, haven't I? <laughs> No, this is perfect. Thank God I have my lucky spray. Nice one, Roy. Roy's face lights up like Christmas. I went to your dressing room first, but you weren't there. No, I'm going on first. First? But the first act's never... It's edited. Oh. How will television act? Because they seem, maybe it's just the way we're voicing them, but they both seem super dumb. <laughs> They're almost they like are. Roy, I believe. So I can believe Stephen being, I like the power of television callback, but some of the other dialogue, like, you know, you, I got you this thing, this is what you wanted. Yeah, that's what I wanted, Roy. Like, hey, <laughs> like, like those, that feels like, um. Are you going to voice acting? Yeah. Rose right <laughs> from the deep bayou, apparently. <laughs> ah. No content in consecutive dialogue. Okay, priority cue. Indeed it is. Mm -hmm. A whole other series of problems. Get that girl some booze. There you heard it. Mm. Let's pretend this is vodka. Yeah, so that's pure vodka right there. So uh, she, she's as tough as coffin nails. Uh, yeah, so I think the, the, the note I have maybe on four is the one, like, uh, misunderstanding that works is the power of television callback. The other jokes about um, Roy's derpiness seem a bit overdone, where... He Maybe feels he just, too derpy. derpy. No such thing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm derpalicious. Oh, thanks oh. for the cheers, the child father. Much obliged. <laughs> you have a beautiful boom, look at our tip jar exploding. Happy Christmas Hanukkah Kwanzaa. Much obliged. These this funding will go to Fox's uh, paintings, which are to be able to see some of our awesome painters. Thanks for the patronage. Much, much obliged. And uh, submit your work because you know now we want to read it because you've been such a kind. Well, we've always wanted to read it, but um, but yeah, submit your work and we would love to check it out. I think I want to zoom this in just a little bit. Moop, moop, moop. There we go. I think that's going to be a little easier to see for those kind folks out in out in cyberspace. <laughs> oh my God, Fox is so dead. Mm. Yeah, so much death. Come on, hang in there, Bubba. You almost uh. made it. <laughs> I'm just going to start pitching uh. your air. <laughs> well, thank you very much, John Father, for the cheers. That was very kind. <laughs> Uh, so kind. All right, we'll we'll keep the we'll keep the the, yep. the act strong here. All right, what are you doing here? Okay, left my gig early. Okay, he's kind of derpy. Or television. Hey. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the producer gives them a pair of withering look. Or looks up the TV. It's so exciting. Yeah, that's a good Louisiana. On the screen, Thor gives a bow to the audience before taking his rightful seat on a golden throne embedded in the audience. I would be so nervous if I was meeting my idol. Try not to think about that, Roy. Okay, so this is getting a little on the nose. We already established that Roy's idol was Thor. I feel like I don't necessarily need... Uh, or that Steven's idol is Thor. I don't think I need this extra one. Uh, I feel like... Establish that idol is Troy from the picture. Or. Oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> I have to sleep. <laughs> I was about to say that. I was like, oh my god, I should be ashamed. Uh, Thor 
from the picture. Um, so this feels heavy handed. Yeah, cut Roy's dialogue down. I would agree. So you review scripts of people from Twitch only to get them from different sources. I heard you say script something before. Script shadow. Yes, indeed. That's separate, though. No need for Roy to hype the moment. I would. I agree. I agree. We've already gotten a lot of hype around that moment. Um, trying to think everything you have been working towards when coming into this one moment. Roy! Oops, sorry. I won't say another word. Sure. You can't be here. Conditions only. Sure, I'll get out of your hair. Oh, that's you. Sorry. Yeah. Sure, I'll get out of your hair. Good luck, buddy. Remember, just be yourself. Yeah, Freud's sweating like a hog, but he's in a paper bag. Yeah. I feel like I don't know what I was supposed to get out of Roy's intrusion. Yeah. Besides, he brings him this creepy doll. I thought he just brought him breath freshener. But he puts... Wait. <sighs> He puts the suitcase down on the floor, flips his lid. Inside is an old-fashioned scary bin tool. But then he pulls out a small shopping bag. From under the dummy without... And in the what? bag, breath freshener. Oh. Yeah. I feel like this... I feel like I kind of wanted to get to this show. I would kind of... I would question that this is the right time to introduce Roy. Is this the right time... Or at least cut it down. Intro Roy um, feels like a lot of screen time for hype and breath freshener. Uh, trust your first scene. The hype was already well developed. Yeah, I mean, I feel like your first scene already did a great job. And, uh, and yeah, it worked. Okay. Okay, see see you in a bit, mate. Then we can celebrate. In that case, consider me your sofa for the night. Or McCall at your service. <laughs> he goes excitedly <laughs> down the stairs. Steven stands nervously in the spotlight. Who dares stand before me? Oh, you want to be Thor? Yeah, I'll be Thor. Yeah. Who dare stand before me? <gasps> Stephen, sir, Stephen McAllister. Pathetic name. Crowd laugh. <laughs> I prefer I prefer letting my tricks do the talking. Don't just stand there, mortal. Stephen takes out a pack of playing cards from his jacket, fans them on the table, smiles at the audience. He signs. One of the cards slides it back into the deck, shuffles them fully, inserts the cards back in the pack. The flash of lightning, the audience gasps. While we're catching the pack, Stephen takes out the cards, fans them. Every single card is now signed. The audience goes wild. He takes a bow and stands apprehensively. Yes, me. Seem to have deceived my audience, but did you deceive me? <gasps> this is a, this is a difficult one. A smile, a slight smile escapes the side of Stephen's mouth. Thor steps down from the throne. I've been waiting for a true master of the arts to stand before me. <sighs> Approaches Stephen, swinging his hammer. Many have tried and failed. I've seen much in my long immortal life. Till now, I've never seen anything as pathetic as this. Pulls on Stephen's sleeves and calls for all out. Not just one, but the whole load. They all just keep falling. Mm -hmm. Thor roars with laughter. The audience follows. I'm banishing you to another world. Have I send all the losers? A child could perform better magic. How do you do? That's a pretty intense trick, yeah. I know. Uh, there's only one last thing to do. Banish, banish, Nightingale. Thanks with the hundred, the hundred bits. Much obliged. Thanks, so kind. You. And you guys are just making it rain tonight. So sweet of all y'all. I know. The tender little. <sighs> Majin Buu oh, with the sub, and Chodfather and Nightingale with the bits, and then Chodfather is even sending us some 
Freaking sweet D and D dice. I know. We are we are we are blessed. Oh, hashtag. Oh, hashtag blessed. Um, but thank you, thank you, much obliged, much obliged. All right. So this sequence, what do we think about it? Um. It's something. It's it's weird because like these humiliation scenes I've seen before. I think you need it, um, but how can I get a, a twist on it? Um, like you know, I think that's what I would ask. Like this, it has a slight twist with Thor's kind of magical tone, which is kind of weird and creepy, which is awesome. But how can we keep twisting this familiar humiliation scene to make it yours, to make it this story's? Um, I have an idea. I have a killer idea. Hear, hear me out. I've never seen a sign name multiplied into a tired deck trick in my life. It's true. It's a really good trick. Um, <laughs> and like that, Fox is done. <laughs> it's done in the front of Thor. That's true. That's true. Um... Yep, Fox is, Fox is ripped. She's, this is, um, it's not a sign of any screenplay issues or quality or anything like that. She just is sleepy. Don't take offense, dear poor writer. Um, she slept through my novel many times. I've seen much in my long mortal life, anything so pathetic. The group of people stand, Stephen fumbles for the stage, slips and collapses on the ground, breathing heavily. <sighs> Stephen so falls through the exit door into fresh air, vomits in the gutter, distraught. He reaches inside his jacket, pulls out a handkerchief, and wipes his mouth. He goes and discards the handkerchief on the floor, but it's attached to a string of handkerchiefs. He reels them out of his jacket, blue, green, red, yellow. In a fit of frustration, he keeps pulling until finally he reaches the end. That's a really great, great joke. I really like that one. Um, P9, like the hanker. And Stephen, friend, the friend performs the trick, and ta-da, he was really the magician the whole time. You're pretty badass. He glances around and spots Roy sitting in the old Volvo, considers walking over, something stops him, embarrassment, shame, perhaps. Turns and watches the Hawks of Possession. Taxi! Taxi pulls over, Stephen jumps in the back. Taxi night. Taxi driver looks at Stephen to the rearview mirror. Watch out. Anywhere. Gazes out of the window, deep in thought. So is he really banished? Be. I'm gonna need an address, fella. Okay, five Compton Road. The driver nods with a smirk. Five full time. Two years later. <laughs> okay. Mm hmm. Peers down in an unseen figure in a child's car seat. Let's get you all tucked in, all cozy. Train pulls up on page 10. I kind of want to see what the bigger hook is. Mm -hmm. Um, What is this silly outfit you're wearing? I'm Turin now. Oh. Sits in the back. In Mongolia, 24 months charting the fault lines that exist between the physical and metaphysical I've seen. Okay. A little bit more hype, a little bit more catastrophic. Be able to handle a two-year time jump. Yeah. I kind of was, like, hoping that it was actually, like, a real banishment, because I didn't really get... I mean, it could have been, like, a actual magical world. So I wonder if he was, like... This was some, like, dystopian future where you actually do get banished. Yeah, but I do agree. Um, feels like the two-year... Gap is surprising. Um, just thought he'd try to. Uh, uh, okay. 
So we're going to get into the overall because Foxy Lady is, you know, just like, whoa, calm down. She's getting way too excited, getting rowdy. Just need to kind of you know, feel safe here, you know, with her just being so rowdy and insane. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what a meatball. <laughs> Queen of meatballs. Oh. Yeah, there she is. Hide your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's a happy fox in her. Yeah, the time jump should happen at the top of page six or earlier. Yeah, I also feel like this intro scene was pretty long. We don't necessarily need to see Roy. Like, his payoff is just this taxi ride thing, which I don't feel is, like, that useful. Um, Because like, that could be a lot shorter. Like, you know, I can get the sense of his total loss... By him just like walking into an empty door and just like walking outside and just not knowing where to go, um, you know. So like these this extra follow up, I feel like that's happening in a few of these things probably isn't super necessary. So anyways, let's talk about the good. Um, really good jokes, great humor, uh, humor. Uh, liked liked the Stephen character a lot. Um, what else we got? That was good. A decent show. Mm -hmm. Good show. Yeah, with it. Still hip. Still relevant. Because <laughs> I'm half asleep. Well, the story just started at page 10, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to send that in. What are you sending in? I have the first chapter done, not just words, print, vomit. Yeah! Well, looking forward to seeing it, Chad Father. Pumped. <laughs> Pumped. I'm going to be hopefully doing a lot more reviews a lot more regularly um, due to the fact that I'm going to be taking some time off of work. Um, I didn't get a vote yet. Which are you voting for? I'm voting for this one, I think. I'll confirm with Fox, but I'm pretty sure that this one is the leader. Yeah. Um, so things I would improve is there is still some shortening to do. A few of the scenes feel like they slip into excess. Um, make the, I will say, the Troy scene a little bigger or more unique. Oh, wow. I'm, like, legitimately dyslexic or something. <laughs> Not a great place to be for a writer. Um... Give me um, me something I haven't seen before in a humiliation scene. Scene I've seen the trick revealed and people laughing all before. What more can add? I think that's a big one. Um, Just throw. Try to pick. Oh, pick up and move on. On after the rejection. Didn't think would need two years to keep moving. Yeah, I think that that's more like at the end of that, you know, rejection scene. I thought he was just gonna kind of go back home, go back to his day job. And then, like, something would happen that would kick him off. Like, you know, mm. that's, like, a lot of times after you have the big humiliation scene, they go back to normal life for a few days, and then they, you know, pick back up. But two years feels like a long time. And it dilutes some of the urgency of the story. Because if, if it, the story could have waited two years, why did we, you know, like, you know, why? Um, so it always... Like, you know, why does it pick back up now? You have to do a lot more work to kind of get back into it. So if you can keep things without these, like, big time gaps, it's usually a lot better. Um, yeah. Um, I was, that's probably maybe my last note. Question, the two-year time gap. Is that really necessary? All right. So this begs the question. 
what is gained from the entire sequence. I do think the sequence is important. Like those humiliation sequences are huge for protagonist sympathy. Sympathy. People love the the shamed protagonist, but uh, yeah, it can be shortened and I think still accomplish its goals, which is awesome. That means you can save a few pages. Um, the only problem is that it's a little over eleven pages. That's that's totally fine. That's totally fine, Chalk Father. No problem. Send it over. Thankfully, we're wrapping up, so you'll be able to go to sleep before 4 a.m., hopefully. <laughs> As a super awkward writer of the commune is reviewing, I think it's super awkward writer of the commune is reviewing other people's scripts. Yeah, oh. So it goes. The audience is fickle, grab them by the throat and never let them go. Yeah, instructions unclear, strangles my audience to death. <laughs> it's true. It's true, Nightingale. you gotta be, you got to be careful with that. Who's the writer of the commune? Um, writing tip, want to improve your writing, look at the verbs, yeah. Yes, all those writing tips are true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes, I wrote them. <laughs> yes, I wrote those, they are correct. All right, well, that is the show for tonight. It was a very short one, but I think uh, we're going to go ahead and post our votes while y'all are here to hang out. Um, so here we're going to say vote is... Roger confirmed. All right, so that's going to be our big vote. I don't think there's a G or a, a D in there. Oh. I can't spell or read, but look at me now. He's cute. You got a great personality. Gave yeah, personality. Uh, <laughs> anyways, y'all, thanks for hanging out on this little late night stream. Um, I'm going to leave the bot on so you can keep farming writing tips. Uh, as people always tell me, I have a tendency to punch my audience in the face, so I'm trying not to do that. Now Roger's going to win. Yeah, I think it is the strongest. I read the other log lines in the few of the first pages, and uh, there seem to be some pretty, it, it, you know, there seem to be some pretty big opportunities in terms of, like, one of them had, like, a half-page thing of dialogue to start it off, which I'm just going off having read screenplays, and whenever you see that, you're like, oh, no. Especially when you had to read the whole screenplay. Uh, if you were going to be a reader, and then you would just be like, this person's going to torture me for 110 pages. I think especially when it was like long. Yeah, very sad. So I'm not saying that's the case in this example, but uh, big chunks of dialogue early on, not getting to the action, not getting to the main storyline fast enough. That is a pretty killer, uh, pretty killer on the reader. Um, so don't do those things yeah. if possible. Sick day is written by the person. The most writing. Yeah. But yeah, concepts. Yeah. It just didn't sound interesting for us, I believe. Yeah, you'd think so. Which one was Sick Day? I liked the top one. I like Blackbirds. Um, Sick Day. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that was sort of like, um, what's the name of the the Bruce Willis Die Hard? But it felt like a weird Die Hard. Oh yeah, female driven take on the original Die Hard. Yeah, but in teen thrillers, you gotta have something special, and like Die Hard's special thing was not like the villain or the good guy. It was him and his wife. It was the fact that he was trying to, like, fix his relationship with his wife. And the only way he fixed his relationship with his wife was by, like, going through this, like, murder blood fest. And, like, that was what healed his relationship. I've never seen it. Oh. Um, well, but that, but I think that was, like, what made Die Hard amazing. Like, that's what made it a legend. Um, so, yeah. But by not representing some extra facet in that concept, I feel like, yeah. I feel like you're going to run into that issue where it's going to be generic because contained thrillers are machines. They always function the same way. They always have the same things. So you have to bring in stuff from drama. You have to bring in character. The character is the only way you make it unique. And, you know, that's how they did it in Die Hard. And that's why it's like a screenplay legend because... They made a contained thriller about a guy getting back together with his wife and learning to trust people. Like, that was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. You have to, yeah, you have to be bringing in a very strong new angle or else a contained thriller is going to be pretty tough to pull off without running into a lot of 
moments people have seen before. Uh, anyways, um, that is that. I'm going to find someone to host because there are five of you kind folks online. Um, so I want to make sure to share the viewers around and see if there's any other creative creative people on. Because um, Novelith is offline. For the Pokemon European Championships. Let's see, Creative. Night Majin, thanks for hanging out. I know this was a short stream. Um, everyone's, everyone's drawn anime tonight, it seems. Uh, what you do on Friday night? Yeah, first day on Twitch. There's a novel writing event. There we go. And there's another writer. So I'm going to try this raid function. Uh, and then I'm just going to host. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and host this kind gentleman, and we will call it a night. Take care, everybody. Thanks Good seeing you all. Good seeing you after all these years, Nightingale. Take care. It's a long, long time. Long road. Yeah. Talks to the spring.